going on? Ross at the out here in Singapore, and I wanted to come at you once more uh, to talk about something that I've been kind of, I think it's been a process for the last three years, actually. So it's a process of refining this dream that I have, right? The dream is to actually change the way we interact with each other as a community, as a collective. I think it's really important that we stop all the fear mongering, we stop, you know, scaring each other, we start, start, sorry, stop communicating with each other when we come from a place of pain. So I think it's really important that I change this. So as I talk to you about the fact that I want to change these things, it means that I need to refine my dream. When I first started out, I knew I wanted to work for myself. That was basically the dream. I wanted to work for myself. I didn't want to punch a clock. I didn't have to get dressed and drive somewhere and go to work and then drive back home and find that I'd lost the entire day basically trying to work for somebody else. Because my biggest frustration with working for somebody else was that I was helping someone else with their goals. And no matter what ideas I had, in the end, I had to adjust or reduce or um, kind of cut down on the things that I thought would work in order to placate the person I was working for. Uh, case in point, I, I mean, I've done anything from marketing, uh, international school, writing curriculum, uh, event planning, uh, dinner parties, special events, all kinds of stuff. And eventually, even though I had a great idea, I had to go with what the owner of the company actually wanted. So I had to reduce what I was doing, adjust what I was doing, even though I didn't feel like I had done my 100%, I had given my all when it came to these things. So it kind of upset me, it kind of bothered me a little bit that this is what I had to do in order to get by. And even then, I didn't feel like I was fulfilling much of anything. I did not feel satisfied with the work I was putting out there. But I had to console myself and tell myself, hey, this is not my work. This is not for me. It's for someone else. And if this is the way they want to do it, the best I can do is hope that they don't put my name attached to it and pass it off as my work because, I mean, that's not what people do, right? They usually steal your ideas and run with it and pretend that they were the ones who came up with everything anyway. So in that regard, I didn't feel so bad. I kind of felt like, okay, I was contributing, but it wasn't my best work. So I eventually started off with this dream of wanting to work for myself. From there, I had to decide, well, what the hell was I going to do for money? Like, how could I actually make this work? And I started off with a t-shirt company at first, thinking that I could actually create something that no one else had seen before. And I did. I really did. But a couple of, you know, tough critics from around the world. And I was like, you know what, let me just hang this up for a little bit because I don't know if I want to jump into the politics of imagery and colors and flags and stuff. And I just kind of hung it up. From there, I actually joined a couple of different courses while I was working, uh, trying to find like a side hustle so that I could build something up, try try something, right? And I felt really good about what I was doing. I started thinking about online coaching and what could I possibly offer as an online coach and what could I teach that no one else is teaching right now? And lucky for me, four years ago, I came upon emotional intelligence. This is back when Ashley Zahabian had first done her TED Talk and no one else was talking about the fact that EQ is way more important than we had ever given it credit for. So little by little I started talking about emotions. Why? Because I do that pretty well I think. As a Pisces, as a mom, as a female, I think I talk about emotions pretty well. But considering everything that I've actually lived through, I really feel like I have a handle on why things happen the way they do. What patterns occur. I've done enough research and enough reading to know that, you know what, there is always a reason behind why people behave the way that they do, why they think that this is okay, why um, why their behavior reflects their beliefs, where their beliefs come from, all those things. I've done all of that and I really, really understand it. I really enjoy that kind of work. So it was something that I was doing naturally anyway with friends, families, guests, colleagues, co-workers, um, So I felt like this is something that I could really offer. And it took me a while to figure out, well, how was I going to adjust this? How was I going to make this work? And so at first it became, I take a couple of clients, I put put together a couple of, you know, uh, speeches, talk to people, do things one-on-one for a very long time. And most of it was pro bono because I was testing my theories. I was testing my strategy. What has to come first? What do they need to know first before they go on to you know, really understanding how to better their lives with all of their human relationships. So again, I was refining my dream. I realized that I needed to reach more people. So I got back on Instagram and originally the company's name was something completely whack. I thought it was so cool. RR fam because it uh, represented the Rasias and Aradhanams because I just lost my grandparents and I wanted to include them in this new dream of mine. Eventually though, when I went to social media, I was thinking, man, as a brand, I need to be easily recognizable. I need to be easily 
found there's, there needs to be one term that pulls everything together. And lucky for me, it was based on an email that I'd created through Hotmail a million years ago. So that's that turned out really, really helpful for me because all my social media handles happened to fall under Rasat One. So here I was again, refining my dream one more time. So I changed the name of my company. And eventually I fell in love with the fact that Gary Vee was going to kick my ass every time he opened his mouth because he has something to say. He has something to really tell you about the way you're running things. How in your face is he about wasting time and uh, giving excuses for why you can't start something because money or equipment or whatever. And he is the king of garage sales and reselling and eBay and all that stuff. So I really took him seriously. So when he decided to tell us, hey, yo, audio is going to be the next best thing. You better get on the train before everybody else does. That's exactly what I did. So I refined the dream again and I got into podcasting. And that's where I'm sitting here with almost 700 episodes talking to you guys all day long about documenting my journey. It's not about me having interviews with people and showcasing everybody else's story. It's more about me telling you what my day-to-day life has been like. And honestly, right now, it's been quite the journey. If I look back at what I was talking about way back when, I'm pretty sure I've said the same thing a couple hundred times. But every time I open my mouth and start an episode, there have been new cases, new examples, new situations that I've lived through recently that I can give you as examples now to kind of drive home the point. So I feel pretty good about what I'm doing. I feel really great about the fact that I'm doing this as a habit now. So here I am with so many podcasts, right? And I'm thinking, okay, well, how do I get it out to the masses? Because when I first started, I was doing Facebook Live audio. Guess what? I don't get that option no more. So here I am voice recording on my phone and it's mass recording because this is like the 11th podcast episode I've recorded today. Um, But only because I've been hoarding topics. I have been putting myself back through school for the last week and a half, especially during this coronavirus quarantine nonsense. And I'm actually grateful that I put everything together because it's making me a little more succinct with my messaging. I'm becoming a little more to the point, quick to explain, use examples. And I feel good about that because usually I can rant and rave for about 20 minutes. I don't know if I lose you guys or not. But what I'm saying is where I started on Facebook Live Audio, I've had to adjust from there till now. Eventually, I had to find a way to actually... um, put my work in places where people could actually find them. Not everyone knows that there was such a thing as Facebook Live Audio, and now people know. So here I am currently um, sharing the podcast on SoundCloud, on YouTube, on um, Spotify, and also on iTunes. So I feel pretty good about the distribution of it all, but even then I still don't know about the reach. Now I'm in another position to refine my business again because I know that thumbnails are going to do way more than I ever could if I don't pay attention. So I'm over here looking at all the interviews I've ever done on Instagram Live so that I can actually make sure that I gain everyone's attention. I think that I'm doing great work. I think that I'm showcasing a lot of really important stories out there, and I think I have some relevant content. But in order for me to reach the masses, I need to be a little more brave and put myself out there a little bit more. So then I started doing IGTV. I needed to curate my feed on Instagram so it's visually appealing. So you actually notice when my posts pop up is not the usual rose gold white background marble background um pinks and you know pastel it's none of that it's very very vibrant it's very in your face and it's very bold lettering because I want it to stand out from everybody else's stuff so here I am once again redefining the dream the goal is to reach people the goal is to teach emotional intelligence but how I go about doing that is going to continually change and if anything has taught me the biggest lesson so far in this journey is the fact that technology is going to continue throwing me for a loop It's going to continue changing. It's not going to ask me permission before it changes, but I got to keep up with the times. So here I am once again. Now I'm actually a little bit more um, active on Twitter, which I've never, ever, ever done Twitter before, but I've been a part of Twitter since 2013. I just never really used it. So here I'm getting involved with the conversation. And yes, it is a lot more interactive. And yes, it is a lot more... um, What is that word I want to say? Satisfying to have people respond to you, to like a post, to retweet, to comment or whatever it is that you're asking. And they're looking for you to ask a question so they can answer. They want to join a conversation. So it's a very different atmosphere over there. So here I am 
once again, refining the dream. And I think I'm going to continue doing that until the day I die because there is no end to this hustle. There is no end to this dream. I'm going to keep adding to it. I'm going to keep refining it. I'm going to keep up with the times as much as I can because it's important to me that all of you change your perspective and instead of find a way to blame everyone else and find a way to stay stuck because it's not your problem, I want you to find a way to build the courage within yourself to go after the things you love the most. Because if I can do it, damn it, so can you. So if you have any questions about business, about refining your dreams, about finding other avenues to actually get your messaging out there, to build a brand, to market as much as you can, please hit me up by all means. Whatever I know, I will definitely tell you. If I don't, I will send you to the people that I look up to. Because honestly, there's no short of sort sorry, <laughs> shortage of information out there. There's no shortage of mentors and people killing the game out there. All you need to know is where to look. And I'm pretty good at pointing that out. So if you have any questions, like I said, reach out. I'm happy to help. But in the meantime, you guys, stay bright, stay positive, and I'm looking forward to coming out of this quarantine with tons and tons of content. I don't know about you. So I'll catch you again soon, all right? Bye.